There are only a few key points you really need to understand about acyclovir and the one that is easiest to mess up is the dosing, so let's go through it. Acyclovir is an antiviral drug that we use to treat infections caused by herpes viruses. Herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 and varicella zoster, the cause of chickenpox and shingles. Against other herpes viruses, it's not that effective. So, acyclovir is a nucleoside analog that specifically inhibits the synthesis of viral DNA. I emphasize again, specifically, meaning it doesn't affect human DNA. It only exerts its effect in the cells that are already infected with a herpes virus because it needs a virally encoded enzyme to become activated in the first place. And this is a big part of the reason why this drug is so safe and well tolerated. Now, regarding the dosing, the most common infections caused by herpes viruses are oral herpes, usually caused by herpes simplex virus 1, and genital herpes, usually caused by herpes simplex virus 2. And for these infections, the usual dosing is 400 mg of oral acyclovir three times a day for adults. This is the dosing regimen most doctors are familiar with, so it becomes easy to neglect the fact that for infections caused by varicella zoster, right, the cause of shingles and chickenpox, you need to use much higher dosage. So instead of 400 mg three times a day, you need to use 800 mg five times a day. I've seen quite a few patients who were taken aback when they saw this number because they thought that the doctor must have made a mistake. But it's no mistake, this is the right dose for varicella zoster, so for chicken pox and shingles. I hope that you remember from my other videos that every person older than 12 who has chicken pox should receive treatment with acyclovir as soon as possible in order to prevent rare but potentially lethal complications like varicella pneumonia. For shingles also, you want to start treatment as soon as possible, preferably within the first 72 hours. Now, why do you need a higher dose for varicella zoster? Well, simply because this virus is not as sensitive, as susceptible to this drug as herpes simplex 1. But for some infections, even this dose is not enough. For severe, life-threatening infections, you will need to use intravenous acyclovir because it achieves much higher concentrations in the plasma and across all tissues than even the highest oral dose. You may remember from my other lectures that herpes simplex 1, besides causing cold sores, can also cause encephalitis. It's actually the most common cause of sporadic viral encephalitis worldwide. It's so common that whenever you see a patient with suspected viral encephalitis, you will start empiric treatment with acyclovir. Not only is it the most common cause of encephalitis, but herpes simplex 1 is also one of the few causes that we can actually treat, so always start with acyclovir. For these severe infections, so herpes simplex encephalitis, varicella zoster encephalitis, disseminated zoster, the dose is 10 mg per kilogram administered three times a day. If your patient's BMI is over 30, make sure you use ideal body weight, not actual body weight, to calculate the dose. If you're finding this video useful so far, wait until you see my course on antibiotics that I designed specifically for clinicians and I teach the things that we actually need in practice. Once I finish this course, I will put the link in the description of every video, so don't forget to subscribe and you will know the minute that it's done. Back to acyclovir. Herpes simplex encephalitis can affect pretty much anyone at any time, including perfectly healthy people. But generally speaking, severe infections caused by herpes simplex and varicella zoster most commonly affect people with a weakened immune system. So, if you see a patient with a severe herpetic infection, you should check if they have any predisposing conditions, like are they on immunosuppressants, do they have an autoimmune disease or malignancy, do they perhaps have HIV? So this is something you should definitely consider while you're planning treatment. As I mentioned earlier, acyclovir is generally very safe and very well tolerated, but there is one thing you should always pay attention to, and that is your patient's renal function. You should always calculate your patient's creatinine clearance and adjust the dose of acyclovir accordingly, especially if we are talking about intravenous acyclovir. Now, the one thing you can do to prevent kidney damage associated with acyclovir is to make sure that your patient is well hydrated for the duration of treatment.
If you want to learn more about herpes simplex encephalitis, shingles and chickenpox, feel free to check my other videos on the channel. Thank you for watching, good luck out there and take care.